Hey guys, it is Tristan with Nerdette's New Stand, and today we are going to be looking at Monkey Prince number one. Now, this is a brand new limited series from Bernard Chain and Jean Luen Yang, of which I am a little bit confused. There's a few issues that I have with it, but I do think it was a solid start to trying to tell a new story. Now, this is something that is based off of the Monkey King, of which I am an uncultured swine and know nothing about. So, going into this, I have to have a lot of explanation as to not only the culture, but the story around it. And I do feel like this did a pretty good job of doing so. Now, it is Jean Louis Yang. I do think that everything I have read by Jean, I enjoy whether it was Superman Smashes the Clan or his newest Superman and Batman run. Really, honestly, I enjoy Gene's work. So I knew I would probably, at the very least, enjoy the story. But it was also rather confusing and very different for a DC comic, even though it does feature Batman. And at first, that was almost a turnoff, right? Like, the first three issues are going to have a featuring of Batman. And I was like, I get it. I get it. Batman sells books, but come on now. <laughs> like, we got to have these stories separated a little bit. But then I would probably complain that this character wasn't integrated into the DC universe. So, you know what? I would have complained either way. And just being real here. No, I'm just kidding. But yes, let's take a look at Monkey Prince. Now, if you're new to the channel and enjoy this type of content, hit like. Leave me a comment down below. Let me know if you picked this up. It's definitely worth a read, in my opinion. I always give everything three issues. I think this pretty much earned me reading the miniseries in one, unless it just greatly falls out. But honestly, this is on DC Infinite. And I say this a lot. Same with Peacemaker and a few other books. A lot of times they put newer books out on here. I believe Puzzle Box is also on here. There's a bunch, right? So it's definitely worth, um, I think it's seven bucks a month. It's a free issue. This is a $4 book. Like, I would have bought it anyway, so it's three bucks more, right? So we get the story of Marcus' son. Now, Marcus' son, parents. Now, this is where it gets interesting, right? So basically, Marcus' son's parents are henchmen. They're henchmen. For one, he has parents. That's always nice. Right in the DC universe, it's like, ah, maybe you're gonna have parents, you're likely to be an orphan. Yeah, okay. So he has parents and they're bad guys. I mean, not really. They are henchmen, they are working for a living, they are great parents. And I like that distinction because a lot of times, if you see the henchmen, besides in stories like Noel and stuff, but they're they're terrible people, right? They are evil to the core. And these people are not. They are great parents. They are just trying to make it for not only themselves, but, of course, their kid, Marcus, right? So this particular night is what made Marcus so afraid of superheroes. Not villains. Superheroes, right? Everything surrounding this night. Not only the, the well, it says right here, right? Not only the thunder, but also the stomping, the water, everything. He could feel it under his feet. And every time he gets water under his feet, he starts to get scared. So it was Batman, right? So not only that, but of course the bats. And um, they he came for the parents until he realized, you know, there's a child here and he leaves, right? At least he is... At least he has that going for him in this book. Now, of course, that is very Batman-like, so I like that. Um, also, Marcus makes this weird, like, piggy noise, like, ee, ee. I don't know. That's kind of how I picture it, like a, I, like a pig. I guess that's maybe because we're going to see a pig here in a little bit, but that's how I pictured it Um, when he gets scared, right? Like his hyperventilation, that's what happens. So they, because of this situation, they were in Batman. They were in um, Gotham, and they move around. They move to Keystone. They move to Bluffhaven. They move all around until they end up settling back in Gotham. And when he comes back, 
you know, the first day back at school, they they have this issue with this jackass um, named the Riz. <laughs> the Riz. OK, um, he is a jerk and he, he basically is picking on Marcus, throws him in the water because, of course, he was scared. And um, his mom comes in and he's talking to this supposed janitor, right? Who offers to help him, but he also he keeps making jokes and it's really cute about being celibate. But you know his mom's <laughs> like he has a crush on Marcus' mom. Okay, um, and she ends up not only going into the office and taking care of her son, she gets the boys in trouble that did it, and they end up getting detention because of it. Now, this is the parents at work and. Um, they're working for Cobblepot to do this like gold thing. He wants to sell a bunch of gold. It ends up they end up saying, you know, it's it's too early. It's too early for all of this, and it doesn't work. Even though they warned him, so they he shoots uh one of the investors. So he goes back and he he takes him takes the janitor up on his offer, and he says, you know, I, I want I I can wait. Is this where he offers him help? No, this is where they actually go in. So basically he he goes through and he, he burps on his face. That's important. Weird, but important. I'm telling you, there's the weird in here. And he, he says, you got to go through this water curtain, right? Face your fears, face your fears. And he refuses to do so. Now he keeps getting these side glances from this girl, but yeah. So he's go going through and he has an obsession with shoes. <laughs> I got to show you this part. I laugh so loud. Um, I always wear shoes, even in the house, it's not because I have a white mom or anything. Oh, my God. So there's a couple parts in here where they have a little bit of, if it were on the other foot, it wouldn't work. But it doesn't bother me. I know it does bother some people. Like, they mention a little bit of drug thing, derogatory things, like calling her a white Karen, saying, you know, my mom, not because I have a white mom or anything. I don't care. I don't know. I, I'm not sure why you would, but I, I'm sure. It's probably going to upset some people. I don't know. Um. Anyways, so um. Yeah, I, I thought it was funny because, like, you know, the Stepford wives, the wives have white wives have to be perfect and da da da. So this this burp keep going around him. He doesn't realize why. He puts a fan, and it does end up going away the next day. And he's talking to this girl again, kind of getting the side glances from her, asking names, and he realizes he has his tail. He has a tail. Okay, so he goes running off the Riz. Um, a bad guy who is not white. I want to point that out because I'm constantly hearing how it's only, you know, white guys that are evil, right? Um, and they, they end up fighting. Um, and basically taking his shoes, beating the fuck out of him, taking his shoes. He goes back to the pool, right? And the girl is there and he wants to face his fears. And he ends up jumping in, right? So he's got to go through the curtain, the water curtain, the actual water curtain. And he has to face bats. He has to face the water. And then he realizes um, that it's not, that his father is not his true father. Now, I'm hoping we get a little bit better explanation to this eventually. Because I think there's going to be like a finding of identity moment within this character. Because... If that is not his true father, then then what's going on here, right? So, um, he is the new monkey prince, um, and the uh, the janitor was not just the janitor, right? His actual name is uh Shifu Piggy, 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 Piggy. So, um, he says, "Claim what's yours," right? And he ends up jumping out. He comes out and he's talking to this girl, and he's like, "I'm not crazy, right? You see, I have hair. I, I, I I'm." Able to ride on a cloud? What is going on? She's freaked out. So he realizes it. And he takes off. And he goes towards the guys that just, just within, you know, a little bit here, beat him up. And Damien's there at school and calls his father. So he goes on a spree. I really like these panels. The art in this was really, really great. The coloring in this, look at that. It's so good. Like, even the light, I love it. So... He ends up going through and basically beating, you know, the Riz and all of the rest of the team that beat him up and getting his shoes back. I mean, I would want my shoes back, too. I get it. So Batman shows up. 
Now, if you remember, Batman was the one that absolutely terrified him and made him hate superheroes. So he freezes up cement. He cannot move. He is absolutely frozen. He goes to move. And as he oh, <laughs> fucking what? This wouldn't happen. Come on, let's be real. But as he does so, Batman throws a batarang. And, and Damien's like, I thought you said no violence. And it literally beheads him. I also want to add in here, you know, they're going a little bit more for the um, culture around manga and stuff. So I love how they make the blood here purple. Not going to lie. I kind of love it because like you saw stuff with Dang and Rapa with the blood being pink. And, and I think that's a really smart move because it's 13 plus. Um, so it's, you know, aim not for everybody. It's an all ages book. There's really nothing in here that, you know, even, you know, a 10 year old couldn't read, but, and that's our end, <laughs> but it's so good. Um, I'm not sure what's going to happen from here. I'm guessing he's going to have some sort of healing power. Like I would hope so. If not, that's the end of our story. But I really thought this was a phenomenal start for a different type of storytelling within the DC universe, a hatred for superheroes as compared to supervillains, parents who are basically great parents, but they have to work for people they don't necessarily want to in order to provide for that child. A lot of unique ideas within this story all wrapped up in one, and I hope it does well because I like new ideas introduced. I like seeing new things show up and new forms of storytelling. That's what we want. This is great. This is a really great start. I really, really enjoyed this. So let me know, of course, what you guys think, and I will see you in the next one. Bye-bye. 